I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Trinity Annual issue number one. When a demonic presence threatens the Earth, it's up to Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman to deal with it. What'll happen next? Let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? Okay then, so I better get this out of the way right at the top of the video. This annual actually carries on from the events that took place in Trinity number seven, which was written by Cullen Bunn and not the usual writer for this book, Francis Manipal. This annual, however, is written by Robin Williams. So already I can't help but feel this story is feeling just a tad bit schizophrenic. That being said, as we join the comic, Rachel Ghoul and Cersei are dealing with their unholy trinity falling apart before it could even start, what with Lex Luthor deciding that he had better things to do and leaving them. Cersei ultimately feels pretty confident that what she saw on the tablets depicting the unholy trinity ultimately being victorious over the good guys and becoming masters of the world will certainly come to pass, and in the meantime, the Pandora Pitt's magical energies will no doubt attract someone new to possibly join their trinity. Now from there we manage to transition on over to Gotham where Bruce Wayne has invited Diana and Clark out for dinner. An unusually chipper Batman says he really appreciates all the good work the three have managed to do over this last year together and he knows that they've been able to do it because they're all fighting for something special, be it family, friends, hope, justice, truth, all that good superhero trinity stuff that we've come to expect. Dinner sadly has to get put on hold as we see a strange hooded figure heading to the Pandora Pits. This person, who ends up running headlong into Ra's al Ghul's personal army, the League of Shadows, is revealed to be none other than Jason Blood. Beloved member of the paranormal side of the DC Universe, making his long overdue DC Rebirth debut here in this series. But as cool as Jason is, it's his alter ego Etrigan the Demon that's the real attraction here. Sensing the evil of the unholy Trinity, Jason and Etrigan came to defeat them. However, Raish and Cersei actually managed to overpower the hell creature and send him into the Pandora pits, which amazingly do what so many other things have failed to do. And that is actually separate the long-suffering Jason from the somewhat more chaotic Etrigan. And really, once the demon is free and the gloves are off, he goes on one giant crazy rampage, summoning up a demon army and attacking a nearby Greek city, letting off thousands of years of pent-up aggression. As you might have guessed, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman respond to the call, and we get ourselves a big old dust-up between the demonic forces and the Trinity. Here's the crazy thing, with Etrigan no longer being part of him, Jason Blood is totally relieved. This is basically everything he's ever wanted. His curse has been lifted and he can finally die. In fact, all the years he's lived start to catch up with him as he slowly turns into man jerky. Mm, Batman can't allow this to happen, however, and has to be the ultimate party pooper, telling Jason that the only way for them to stop Etrigan is for him to once again welcome him back into his body. Granted, that's going to be a lot easier said than done, as the ancient binding ritual requires blood sacrifices, multiple blood sacrifices in fact. Being the selfless heroes that they are, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman willingly decide to give up their own lives if it'll mean it will stop the rampage of Etrigan and his demon army. The ritual itself is actually a really awesome image. Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman all grab a piece of the lasso of truth and stand around Jason in a triangle. The ritual begins to work, but just when the blood price is about to be paid, Cersei the Sorceress decides decides to come on in and use her black magic hacks to make it so the three heroes don't have to die. Why? Because she's already sworn that Wonder Woman will die by her hand and no one else's. Furthermore, her and Raish are basically still cheating and using that future tablet, and if the three heroes are to die here, that means the future, wherein the unholy trinity is ultimately victorious, can't come to pass. Of course, in a bit of a plot hole, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman don't see Cersei doing this, nor do they question how they're still alive at the end of the ritual. The day is saved, even if Raish and Cersei, the real villains, manage to slip away to fight another day. They take the Pandora pits with them, and Cersei says that the next part of their plan may take a little bit more work, and that is for the prophecy to truly come to pass, they will need a trinity of trinities. Both the good guy trinity, their own unholy trinity, and the dark trinity 
of Red Hood Artemis and Bizarro, but that's a story they say for probably another annual. So there you have it everyone, Trinity Annual number one, and it was alright. As I mentioned before, changing so many writers to tell this one story makes the whole thing feel very uneven. Also, despite being a Trinity annual, the story itself was actually way more about Etrigan and Jason Blood. Not that I'm complaining, I absolutely love that underrated rhyming demon jerk. I also don't doubt this whole Unholy Trinity, Trinity of Trinity storyline is definitely building up to something cool. It's just, I don't know what that is yet. It's a cool idea, I just hope it can be played a little bit more consistently in the future. Overall, though, I think I'd feel comfortable giving this one a 6.5 out of 10.